You want to migrate your applications to Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS, but you have no idea how to get started. My name is Rajdeep Saha. I'm a Principal Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. I have been working at AWS for four and a half years. And in these last four and a half years, I have migrated multiple customers, both small, medium, and big to Amazon EKS. Today, I'm going to share some of the key takeaways from those migrations so that it can help your journey. Step number one, pick a pilot project the project should be representative of your applications, but it should have some room for experimentation. Do not pick a project so critical that if you fail, you will get fired. As part of migrating to Kubernetes, there will be some experimentation as well as sometimes you will try one thing, it is not going to work out, then you will try an alternative thing, then you will do some load testing and then you will find out that Maybe that option is also not good, so you have to go back to the drawing board, etc. Second, give yourself a generous timeline, but commit to a deadline. You can use any tracking mechanism that your company uses, either OKR, which is objective and key results, or Kanban board, but it is very important that you do pick a deadline. If you do not do that, I have seen the scope keep increasing and the project keeps stalling. Now the third step, this step is important. You have to attack each areas, as in scalability, observability, security, deployment, day to operation. And you have to upskill and decide the tools you need to use for each of this area. For example, observability. For observability, you'll have log, metrics, and traces. Attack each one of those and do some experimentation with different logging agent, different logging systems, and then decide. When you are comparing a couple of different tools, write down why you are deciding one tool versus the other. Use this divide and conquer process to upskill this core pilot team or the tiger team as well. As you go through each of this area, either sequentially or parallelly, depending on how many people are there in this pilot team, write down the learnings. For example, let's say you are trying to scale your Kubernetes applications and you might try Cluster Autoscaler and Carpenter. As part, you will learn those both for Kubernetes as well as for the cloud. And then write down that, okay, I tried Cluster Autoscaler, I tried scaling with 10 nodes, this is the time it took, this is the advantage, this is the disadvantage. Then I tried with Carpenter, I tried to scale the same amount of nodes, and these are the good things I observed, this is the bad things I observed. Write everything down, because for each of these areas that you are doing, you can reuse this document for other applications in your company. And you can also use this to create a standard. Now, this is a big one, remember, there is no perfect tools or perfect strategy to satisfy diverse kinds of applications. Use existing tools where possible. Because if you pick a shiny new tool, it's not just about using that thing. You also have to think about day two operations. I have migrated customers who have used Amazon CloudFormation to do infrastructure as code. You might think, Oh, why not Terraform? Why not Crossplane? Why not SCK? It's simply because the team already had deep knowledge on CloudFormation and they leveraged it. Similarly, for DevOps, if you already know a lot about, let's say, Jenkins, use Jenkins to do the CI CD pipeline. You do not need to go and adopt something new. New and shiny does not equal to functional. You have to choose what works for your organization. Next, once this pilot project goes live, empower that Tiger team or the pilot team to scale the learnings and evangelize throughout the company. This is very important. Other projects need to see that it is possible. Partner with your AWS account team. 
and then hold joint webinar and joint internal workshop throughout your company. During this process, you can also standardize certain things. Remember that design document that you did? You can refer to that. Let's say for security, you created some Kaibano policies. You can standardize that for other applications and then add further things as needed. But you already have different areas and the standards established. It is always easier to find similar projects to migrate because if the project is similar to your pilot projects, you can move them faster. And as you migrate these projects, the teams and other folks are also upskilling in all those Kubernetes and these tools so that they can help out and the knowledge spreads. And finally, avoid analysis paralysis and get started. Like I said, there is no absolute perfect tool or absolute perfect strategy. For example, even the same thing can mean different things in different company. Platform engineering is a hot topic. But the responsibility of platform engineering for company A can be different than company B and company C. Give your friendly AWS account team a call and the account team can engage container specialists like me to help your migration. What did you think of these steps? Did I miss any major step? If your application has been to Kubernetes and something has been really helpful, feel free to put it in the comment and I'll make sure I tag the most important or most valuable comment and I'll comment and try to answer on your replies. All right, folks, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.